so we've got our substation here and going down this way we've got uh, 78 amps in the road 75 in the center and 68 on the right hand side What's up guys? So we're out at one of our rural substations today as you can see in the background and we're going to be doing some ant checks on the primary um, for purposes of load balancing. So a good time to do that is when there's lots of load on the line and today it's minus 21 with the wind chill. Pretty chilly out today and uh, it's noon time so there's going to be lots of people with their heaters and ovens cooking lunch and stuff so thing is this is our substation here i could that's a metering tank right there going down to some equipment in the panel right there so we could get the amperage on each phase right out of the substation but the reason we're not going to be doing that is this three phase line actually goes down and splits off into two different directions so we want to get the exact amperage in both directions. That way, if let's say we get 150 amps on A and B and 100 amps on C phase, there's going to end up being 50 amps return on the neutral. We try to keep things as balanced as possible, keep that amperage off the neutral. But also, it's it's better for the coordination of our fusing on the system if the phases are all the same. So I know I'm going to get a little bit of flack because the ammeter I will be using is this guy right here. So we've actually got this stick. It's a tested stick specifically designed for this. You can see here, expires June 2020. And it actually holds an ammeter in place here. And as you operate this little trigger, it's going to push on this guy right here and open up the ammeter, just like that. So, as I said, I'm gonna get a little bit of uh, pushback off this because there's actually ammeters specifically designed for high voltage use. This particular ammeter is designed for up to a thousand volts, but that's not the ammeter per se. It's uh, as a multimeter, just taking out another one here. So this is my regular multimeter. All right, so we got this guy here, pretty much same thing. If you were to stick these leads on 7200 volts, that thing's gonna blow up on you. Very, very dangerous. But with the leads out of the device, such as this one, and just using the clip on, it's perfectly safe to do so. We do have a tested procedure written up in our standards to be allowed to use this particular amp meter on the high voltage that being said guys um somebody had contacted me somewhere a company in the u.s regarding an ammeter that was specifically specifically designed for high voltage and i went to refer back to that message this was like last year sometime and it just it buried in a sea of thousands of messages so uh whoever sent me that message if you're watching this video uh definitely interested in the product i'd like to uh they mentioned they have a demo that we could try out that's specifically designed for the high voltage i can't even remember the name of the company i'm really sorry for that but uh, i'd love to try it out it would certainly be a lot better than what i'm using we are looking at a few different products as well as a company that's something that's a little bit out, out of my hands but i'm hoping to have a bit better product for this in the near future but as for today like i said we're going to put that ammeter on the hot stick clip it onto the high voltage and see what we get for amperage i'm anticipating somewhere around probably 120 120 amps per phase that's uh on 7200 volt phase to ground 12,470 phase to phase. 
So that's a ratio of 60 to 1 down to our 120 volts. So if we get, let's say, 100 amps on the 7200 volt system, that would be equivalent to 6,000 amps. Um, talking 120 volts, like what your breakers would see in your home. 6,000 6, amps. All right, so that pole behind me, that's where we were going to do our amp check. So the sub feeds coming from that way. It's about a thousand houses to the right and about a thousand houses to the left. But unfortunately, by a complete coincidence, there was a vehicle that just took the ditch just down the road from here. I'm up on a little side street here right now. See the main road there. Cars look cool by. But uh, no one's hurt or nothing, but the vehicle's in the ditch pretty bad, so I don't want to have that on camera. So I'm gonna go out and get these amp checks. I got one more spot to do, so we'll see if we can't get the helmet cam on and get the amp checks at the second location here in a little bit. Talk soon. Right, so it looks like we're gonna be able to cut out the, uh, the shots of the vehicle in the ditch there pretty easily, so. Alright, so this is a four wire flat construction, 12,470 volts. That's our neutral right there. You can see the copper ground going down and bonding to the neutral. So the total amperage on the source right above my head should be equal to the sum of uh, the left and right side of this pole. So where it's going to be harder to reach over there, we're going to get the total amperage. We got 96 amps on the center phase. 116 amps. And our last one, 112. So 96, 116, and 112. That's not too bad. All right. So we gotta make sure we go on the right side of those leads coming down off the main feed. So this is our 116. So we've got 49 amp. 53 amp. And 57 amp. That's not too bad. So this side is pretty well balanced. So we're just going to subtract those numbers from the overhead numbers. I'll just review the video and mark all that stuff down. So the one side's pretty good. She's balanced within a couple of amp. That's nothing. That's not even worth looking at. The other side looks like it's off. Maybe 20 amp at the most. Probably nothing we'll address, but uh, we'll bring it back to the engineers, see if they want to do any load balancing out of the lines. So this pole here is actually a great spot to do some load balancing. You can see someone actually left the old stirrup there where that single phase sideline was fed off the road phase at one point. Now it's on the field phase. But uh, it's, it's not something you can do while energized. You can't parallel with two different phases to keep the power on the sideline. So we'd have to open the cutout grab that tap clamp over here, swing it over into the road phase, and that'll put some more load on that A phase, try to balance things out. There's probably about 25 houses on this sideline. Hopefully in the future I'll have a little bit better ammeter on hand. If I get one in, I'll certainly uh, show you guys, check it out, see how it works. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. Pretty straightforward stuff there. It's, uh, like I said, good to do it when there's more load. It's, it's minus, like I said, minus 21 with the wind chill. A lot of people out this way use wood heat. So that's not a lot of load for the amount of customers that are on this part of the line. We get a couple other subs we're gonna do. I'm not sure if I'll grab any footage or not. It's kind of redundant at this point. Um, one thing I did forget to mention, 
when I said if you use the leads, you can use that ammeter on the high voltage, it's safe, but don't ever use it for checking voltage with those leads. That'll, that'll blow up in your hands, it wouldn't be good. But uh, to check voltage, let's say between a phase and the neutral, we'd have what we call phasing sticks. And we've got both the analog and digital phasing sticks that are properly rated for that. So one of these days, uh, those are sitting in the office, if ever we do some some phasing checks or voltage checks with those, I'll haul them out and we'll see what we can not get on film. Until next time guys, drop me a fist bump. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.